Hi everybody. This week's project, or at least one of them, is going to be a hanging planter. And I'm going to show you a kind of clever way to get it done where you can put the holes in and get the drainage all in one shot. Um, and it'll also give you a way to hide the ends of your uh, hanging ropes so that they're within a fold of the rim of the pot and not adding visual clutter to your form. So I have here five, five plus pounds of clay and I'm gonna throw it on a bat. It's gonna make my life a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and smack that down. I don't know if you noticed, but I had spiral wedged that clay, which put it into a cone shape. And I always put my spiral wedge pieces point down. I get much less trouble with cracking because that part here that you can maybe or maybe not see little swirls in from where I spiral wedged it is up at the top and it's gonna get compressed by the action of my centering part that was pointy at the top was already compressed against the table as I spiral wedged. So that's a really good thing if you're going to spiral wedge and there will be a video on that technique at some point in the near future. So let's center up. My centering looks a little bit weird. I've got a giant blister in the palm of my left hand, which is where I would normally put all the pressure for centering. So this is a little strange. I'm using my thumb. I am not advocating that as a technique. It's actually hard and not so great, but I can get it done. I'm going to pull in a little bit with my right hand because this is going to come down to a, a narrow base. And now I'm going to go ahead and open this form. The narrow base is because I'm going to start narrow and eventually I'm actually going to trim it to be a complete dome shape. So I don't need to leave a ton of clay in the bottom, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but somewhere in that range. Right now it looks like it's a lot more, but I always like to check. I was at about a half an inch, so I can go a little bit deeper. And then I'm going to draw out with my fingertips and create a nice opening that is bowl shaped. That's where the plants are going to have room to grow their little roots. Just drawing it out and making sure that that floor is nice and compressed. It's okay to go back and forth over it a few times. The pads of your fingers, you can kind of see where my skin is showing, that's the contact area. So it's a nice broad contact surface. And my fingers have a little bit of a backward bend when I straighten them up like that, which is handy for pottery. Compress that rim, and then we're ready to go ahead and pull this up. I want it to go up first and then out. So I'm gonna dig in pretty firmly at the base here. And I'm going to pull more vertically than I would for a normal bowl. If it wants to come out, I'll let it. Stopping and releasing very slowly at the rim. I definitely want everything to stay nice and balanced. lay off. I need to leave a little bit of sturdiness up here. I don't know whether I'm going to post the first attempt at this project, but I got really greedy and the whole upper wall was very thin. And as I had it flipped over and was working on the uh, bottom part of it from the outside, the whole thing caved in. It's all right. That's why we work in clay and not uh, diamond cutting. Not a big deal to throw it back in the bag and wedge it up for another time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this up and out and try not to get greedy this time. All right, that is plenty of thinning of that wall. So, nice shape. Dry out that floor, no sense in leaving it full of water. All 
All right. Got my wood knife. I'm going to cut this little skirt of clay off at the base. I could take care of it when I flip it over, but I enjoy doing it more with the wood knife now. I'm running my needle tool underneath that ring of separated clay and now I can just peel it off. It's funny the same thing has happened two times in a row where that ring kind of re-adheres to the bottom. I'm feeling this must be extra sticky clay. All right, that's looking kind of like a bell, and that's what we're shooting for. I am now going to take my chamois and finish this edge a little bit and show you how to get it to flip over. Okay, well, don't need a burst of speed there. I think because of that little Pedal oops. I'm going to just run over the wall with my ribs and just stabilize everything. I just had my metal rib out. It is flattened to the bottom of the bucket where it likes to hide. So I'm just going to compress between the two ribs. Some kind of bird is not happy. All right, that's feeling a little bit more on center at this point. So now I'm gonna get that chamois and show you how to flip this rim over. So I want to take this outside hand and support below the rim while I press outward with my chamois in my left hand. And that's going to fold this rim out much more horizontally. And the amount that I fold out is the amount that will fold down when I push it far enough. And I just need enough that the ends of my ropes when I'm hanging this planter will um, just be hidden underneath that rim. So that is fairly horizontal. Let's push it the other way. Spinning, and I'm gonna use my thumb actually and just fold it down. And make a nice U-shaped pocket where when we drill the holes in the top, we'll be able to um, just hide the ends of the rope. All right, that is looking good. So the next step is just stiffening up this wall so that I'll be able to flip it over successfully without it collapsing. So that's a torch job and it's probably gonna take a couple minutes. So if you wanna fast forward through this part, you can. If you're interested in kind of how long it takes to get something torched sufficiently, you can just watch in real time and I'll give you some tips on how to use the torch. First of all, clean your hands so you don't gum up the mechanism in your torch and get it lit. And then you don't have to be far away. You can get right up on it. The hottest part of the flame is about an inch from the end of the nozzle. And because I have the wheel going around and around, I don't have to wave it around wildly. Just slowly move it up and down the profile.
working on this outer edge, getting it nice and stiffened up. And I'll come up underneath here as well. Working my way up and down that profile. stop the torch and I'm gonna sight beyond my pot to something dark so I've got a black car that's wonderful I can see all that steam rising if you don't have something dark behind it it's really hard to tell whether you've got steam coming I'm fairly convinced that the co2 from the propane torch plus the heat plus whatever delicious smells my body's giving off uh, really call in the mosquitoes so this is good when you're making videos on your front porch to do lots of torching, I'm sure. Oof. Good thing I grew up in New Orleans and know how to take a mosquito bite. All right, so this top edge is feeling great. I'm confident about flipping it over. The outermost edge here wants a little bit more stiffening. Obviously, you could do this over time. This torching is just so that I can get this done and make this one video and show you what I'm trying to do here. Absolutely no reason why you couldn't set this aside and come back later in the day or even a, a later day with it wrapped up to do the remaining steps, but patience is not a virtue I possess. So I'm gonna center this foam bat up. This is urethane foam on a masonite bat, and I need to get the masonite bat centered over the other bat. And so I'm gonna use my finger as a gauge and just see where it's sticking out and stop the wheel on the side where it's sticking out and push it away from my finger. I guessed pretty well. It's only about a quarter of an inch off, so I'm gonna stop it when it's by my finger and move it half that distance, an eighth of an inch. That's pretty darn good. Normally I tap things on center anyway, so I just double check that I liked the way it felt tapping on center. That'll be an upcoming video. I'll teach you how to do it with a can of beans or something. Um, so this is ready to flip. It's secure enough um, sitting on that foam bat that hopefully it'll let me do all the alterations that I want to do. So now I'm going to wire under it. I've done everything I need to do right side up. It's time to work on it upside down. And hopefully it's going to let go of that bat. bat isn't wanting to let go, or the bat pins aren't wanting to let go of the wheel. There we go. So 
one bat pin stayed. Gonna take flip it over. So zero to 180, really fast. No messing around. Set it down. And I find if you flex the bat, sometimes it'll break the seal better. Hopefully it didn't move. I'm a little suspicious that it did, which it did in the last video that I tried. A potentially bloopery video. I don't know, maybe it didn't move. We'll reserve judgment. So both pins back in the wheel head. Figure out where your bat pin holes are, line it up. And try to get it to stick back down. Now, in theory, this should be really stable. It's basically a dome and we want to reshape it. Yeah, it moved. It moved about a quarter inch. I'm gonna try to get it back right, so. It's so wonderful when it just lets go and does what it's supposed to do. Hmm. Any moisture on your hands will prevent you from moving it. There. Perfect. Got lucky, it's back on center. So, practically speaking, you could just kind of soften that edge, um, maybe pop a hole in the middle now, or you could wait uh, and this would be totally fine. Uh, they look nice like this. They're easy to pot up uh, your plants because you've got a flat bottom. You can just sit on your potting bench or wherever you're working and fill it up with soil, fill it up with plants. I like the idea of funneling all of the extra water to the middle and out a hole that looks kind of like a spout. I think if you had a whole bunch of them hanging under a porch or something, it would just look really cool to see all these little teardrop shapes coming down. So that's my vision. I'm gonna to try to make it happen on camera for you. Um, it's also fun to just kind of throw something on a different axis from how you started. If you haven't checked out the um, upside down dog bowl video, it's another good example of flipping things. So here I am upside down. I've got my needle tool. I'm gonna to cut a small hole in the bottom just big enough to get my finger in. And that feels like it was falling in, so I'm gonna try to pull it out. There it comes, at least part of it. All right, so a hole has been bored in that bottom. Now, what I wanna do is dampen a finger and stick it in there and then hook my finger and actually lift this floor upward. Take your time, let the wheel do the work. So I'm gonna stabilize my hand and I'm just gonna start lifting up. And I can reach my finger farther underneath and kind of complete this dome shape. Lifting it up. Don't worry, we're gonna be able to pull that clay closed now you've got this corner here that was the original juncture between the bowl and the flat of the bat sometimes it helps just to take a little wisp of clay off of there um, to help that transition end up being nice and smooth so i'm going to put the finger back inside and i'm just going to use my trim tool and i'll stop after i make a revolution revolution or two and pick these pieces off because otherwise it'll all just get stuck back on there One more time. Got a little carried away with number of revolutions and so the pieces fell and hopefully they won't get stuck where they don't belong. Doesn't matter so much how neatly this gets done because we're gonna come over it with a rib so I'm gonna sort of fudge this a little. Now this clay that I'm trimming, really that part hasn't been torched. So it's just 
completely soft and malleable and also sticky. Okay, so in order to kind of help complete this dome feeling, I'm going to take that rib and just work the shoulder a little bit. Kind of shaking off my hands so I don't have extra water that's going to drop down into that trough. Got a finger inside, kind of help buoy the shape. So now we've got this really interesting bell shape. And all that's left to do at this point for me is to close this bottom down farther. That wouldn't be a terrible size for a drainage hole, but <clears throat> you're going to end up needing to put something, a, a shell or a pot shard in the bottom to keep the soil from falling out. And I would rather this thing just drain beautifully um, in a little drip. So I'm going to kind of collar and keep damping my fingers, but I don't want water to drip down the side. So I'm just going to be real minimal. What I'm doing is I'm reaching under with my middle finger and I'm using my left thumb to kind of help draw the clay upward. And my right hand is kind of making a bracket that's squeezing the, clay's clo clo the clay closed as well. Easy for me to say. And that'll let me get a hold of it, bring it up, and then collar it. And there's enough material here that used to be the floor. I actually can bring it up quite a bit. And then collar it. And when I'm all done collaring, can just level it off with my needle tool. I'm gonna come in here and fair that curve. And then I'm gonna collar. Now something that's this small, you don't go in with your whole hand to collar. I use my favorite finger finger, thumb thumb, knuckle knuckle technique. And so I've got six points, it looks like that. So those are the thumbs, those are the fingers and then these are the knuckles here. So I'll get around it and just narrow that up. And the unevenness of course propagates up to the rim. That's what unevenness does on the wheel. That's all right. I don't want to get this thing too thin and fragile because it would be too breakable. But now I can just come back with my needle tool and level that out. That looks nice. And now I will compress it because I don't want anything sharp down there. It's going to be challenging enough. When you pot up this plant pot, you're going to have to put it onto another planter to give it support. So that's not trying to balance on that little nozzle. But I want to make sure that's nice and compressed. And it terminates the form. It's the thing that you're actually going to see underneath all the, the um, greenery coming down out of the pot. So you want it to look really nice and terminate in a pleasing way. So to me, that's looking pretty good. The opening is about three quarters of an inch right now, which I could make it smaller. Kind of collar it in a little bit. That looks pretty nice. One final pass with the rib to get everything refined just so. And then this one's ready to dry. It's sitting on a piece of foam, so it's happy like that. And I can just let it dry to leather hard. And I don't really think this needs extra drainage holes. Maybe if you're trying to grow an orchid or something like that that really needs a lot of air on the roots, you could put more. But because this hole comes down like a funnel, it should drain really fully with just this one nice little drainage hole. Finding that curve. And I'm going to leave these throwing lines in it. Um, to me, they add a little evidence of process. Um,
managed to gouge this part out here with my rib. So I'm gonna pass over it one time with the chamois just because I'm a perfectionist. And then I'm gonna leave it alone and let it get to leather hard. And then at that point, you just wanna put three holes in 120 degrees apart. So like an equilateral triangle and the holes will um, give you a place to run cord through, tie a knot and then pull up. Then you can bring the three cords together. And if you're a macrame master, you can make it look really good. Uh, if you're like me, you'll just tie an overhand knot with all three and then put a hook through it and call it good enough. Um, but that is a really fun all-in-one, no trimming, no muss, no fuss, um, hidden anchor hanging planter. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions about it, leave me a comment or send me an email. And I hope you have fun trying it out in the studio this week.